So today is our last day of working with the Parami of Resolve. As Bill mentioned yesterday, make magic out of the ordinary. Make magic by showing up fully, mindfully, as much as is possible. And today, today I'd like to close with a very basic and important resolve. The resolve to take care of your well-being. To check in on it regularly. Check in on the body, on breathing, check in on the mind, on what it's thinking about, and then check in on the heart, on the attitude of your attention. Body, breath, heart, and mind, just four things that we want to try to remember to check in on. And then you adjust accordingly. Keep letting go of stress and noticing, noticing when ease is present. Make much of that. This isn't intended to be an occasional practice. This is really intended to be a daily practice. We're in it for the long haul, for however long that is, right? So we want to check in on our well-being. What would it be like if you paused in the middle of your day to notice, to drop in and notice what it feels like inside, to get a pulse, to take an interest in how you just got stirred up by that phone call, or notice when you've been rushing around all morning without a break, and you realize, I'm tired, or I'm hungry, or I need to go to the bathroom. How many times have we overrode the signal to go to the bathroom or to get a drink of water uh, because we didn't stop to check, or because we didn't pause long enough to let the signal register? It's for our welfare. The other day, I had a Zoom meeting with someone. <clears throat> I sent the meeting link, and 10 minutes later, I was still sitting there. And I texted, and then I sent the link again. Where were they? Did they forget? Were they late? Did one of us get the time wrong? I waited some more. When the person finally arrived, they were anxious and stressed. They too had been waiting, but in another Zoom room. And they too thought that they were being stood up. We assured each other that that was not the case. We laughed about the, the imprecise interface between human and computer, and then we sat. Not long, but just sat for a little bit. We sat to, to settle the jangled energy, sat long enough to let the dust settle, long enough to arrive back in the present moment with a little more composure, with a little more ease, with a little more presence of mind. It's amazing what a few well-placed mindful breaths can do to calm the system down and to bring us back to center. When I was young, I worked long hours and I took a few breaks. There was even a period of time when I didn't take vacations and prided myself in not taking any sick days. But honestly, that was the least healthiest time of my life. I had no idea how tired and stressed I was. As long as I kept going, kept moving and keeping pace with my colleagues, I didn't, I couldn't feel how tired I was. It wasn't until my mid thirties that I started to appreciate the importance of taking vacations and the value of going on retreats. They helped me let go of stress, gave me a clear break from work, and let me come back to center. But it wasn't until my 40s, my 40s, 40 years on planet Earth, before I recognized the need to take care of my well-being, that nobody else was going to do that for me. Now, that may seem odd that it took so long, but I think that many of us who are in relatively good health don't notice the need to take care of ourselves until we get sick or something breaks. When we're young, the days just roll on one into the next and not much seems to change. But when we reach a certain age and that age is different for all of us, we begin to feel the impact of how we have lived. When that mindfulness bell rings, answer it kindly. 
I was in my 40s when I finally noticed, really noticed, enough to admit to myself that I lived in chronic pain. I didn't let myself notice that for the first 30 years of my life because I wanted to fit in. I wanted to be normal. So I took medicine and carried on. But by 40, I started to actually feel the labor of getting through a day, a long day of work with a migraine, day after day. It also wasn't until my 40s that I could finally give myself permission to go off script with my meditation practice and figure out how to how the best way for this body, heart, mind to practice. All of our bodies and minds and hearts are different, and we need different recipes. We understand the orientation, but we need to kind of figure out what's the best mix for me? What feels right for me? Now, how did all of this happen? How did I wake up to this awareness that I needed to look after my own well-being? By checking in on how I was really doing in the privacy of my own mind, body, and heart. By checking in on and off the cushion and seeing how it really felt inside, seeing what was working and what wasn't, and then adjusting accordingly. Small doable adjustments, nothing big. Like noticing when my mind was tired and I needed to take a break from work or that I needed to interrupt a conversation that was headed south because I had just registered that my body was tight with tension and my mind was flooded with unkind thoughts. And if I opened my mouth, it was trouble. (laughs) Back away, back away from the hot stove. But I could see it. Because I started to learn to check in body, breath, heart, mind, what's really happening. They will tell us if we give a, if we pause enough to look and see. This little practice was a game changer. When we were little, it was the adults around us who were supposed to look after our welfare. That is, until we could take over. We are the only ones who will be with us till death do us part. We are the only ones. So let's look after our welfare. Let's look after our well-being. Let's take the long view. Check in. Check in regularly. Check in 